Hey, Don here. In this video, we're going to delve in some sweep picking and I'm going to cover two very common mistakes that can hold you back when it comes to the cleanliness and articulation of your sweep technique. So whether you're new to sweep picking or you've been doing it for a while, but it doesn't really click, then this video might really help you out. Before I show you these, I want you to realize that it's a simple fix, but it's not an easy fix. And what I mean by that is that while the techniques themselves are easy to implement, it will still take a lot of work to really ingrain them in your playing. So you will need to practice. Shocker, I know, right? But you won't be able to just try this out for an hour and then be Frank and Bali. I'm also gonna issue a little challenge here. So I want you to practice this practice routine for a week. And it's not going to take you long, but I want you to do it exactly as I tell you to do it and then report back and see if your overall sweep technique hasn't improved a lot, even within just seven days. So with all that out of the way, let's get going with the actual lesson. All right, so the first mistake has to do with the right hand, as you could see in the previous screen. And what the problem with the right hand is that a lot of people tend to separate the pick strokes and also have a hard time finding a good uh, motion that works for their body. So this kind of relates to the previous video about the speed burst stuff. But we're going to approach it slightly differently. And I always say that when you, uh, and this is when I talk to my students, not when I speak to my mom. She doesn't play guitar, she wouldn't understand a word what I'm saying. But when I'm talking about sweep picking with my students, I always say that uh, you have sort of this uh, training wheels built in for sweep picking if you know what to focus on. So what this is called uh, is rest strokes. And what it means is that you're gonna go from string to string in a straight line like this. So I'm just falling to the next string. I don't separate the pick strokes. Right, so that's a very important thing, but it's one thing to know that, but it's another thing to find uh, what feels comfortable at speed. So why I don't have any, uh, I'm not amplified right now, I just put the volume down here, is you can actually hear just the guitar like this, and also it's less annoying, otherwise it's not nice. So just turn down the volume on your guitar, and then try doing this. Plant your pick on the low E string, like this, so you're actually on the string now. Then you just let the pick fall, like that. So like a slow strum, like you would go just an open chord like that. But we're just muting the strings here. So you do that first, then you reverse that and you go the other way. And if you're like most people, you're probably going to see that your hand is going to do this uh, slant that Troy Grady likes to talk about a lot. Uh, and it does this naturally. It feels very unnatural to keep the hand like this and then try to go up. As it feels equally unnatural, unnatural to have the hand like this and try to go up like this. So this might look slightly different when you do it yourself. But it doesn't really matter. But if you do it this way, you have to go do this first. And you try to separate the strokes. You want to get, if you have a six string guitar, you want to have six separate strokes. And what I mean is a six separate notes, not separate strokes, because that's what we want to avoid. So, but just let the pick fall. And this is actually quite a fast sweep. This is probably faster than you would need to sweep in any musical context, right? And the same thing goes this way. And then you want to try to combine these two. So you try to. Just find, you know, relax and try to find what's the smoothest way for your hand and your technique. Because remember, this has to work with your overall technique. So you might have a completely different, you know, hand position than what I have. So it will look different. So you don't want to copy me necessarily. You want to find out what works for your playing style. So just do this for a while and you, you can experiment and see like what works the best. But you just look, what we're looking for here is uh, an as even as possible sound. So you don't want to go, right? You want to go, just trying to find that so you get the brrr type sound. Now once you find that, 
I want you to slow that down. And when you do that, you're going to find that what you end up, with, end up with when you do it slow enough, that you actually end up with this rest stroke technique, where you fall from string to string. But hopefully now it's going to be in a more natural way. And uh, I'm saying this because this is what I've noticed in students, where they start doing this, I tell them about the rest strokes technique, and then they do that, but very rigidly, and it feels very unnatural. But if I start them out like this, they can always go back to this. And that's what you should do. So whenever you feel like, oh, it feels kind of awkward now when you added the left hand, for example, just go back to this and see like, okay, what's the natural way to do this for my right hand? And as you can see, when you look at it this way, when you experiment it, with it for a while, you can see that it's not really a, a speed issue in the right hand when it comes to sweep picking. It's actually more an articulation issue with the left hand. And that's what we're gonna go to next. But before we leave this right hand issue, uh, what you want to make sure that you do when you practice this is that you keep it to the same motion. Because I've seen this uh, time and time again when we add the left hand, uh, and I'm gonna show you two exercises, but I'm, I'm gonna show it in more detail soon. But if you add just the left hand like this, what I would see a lot with my students is that it would do this. They would be fine doing this, but as soon as they added the left hand, not that bad, obviously, but it would be, they would tense up and they would lose all like the natural technique in the right hand. So that's why I think it's very important. Just experiment with this, try to find what feels good, and always have that sort of in your back pocket, like your, uh, a tool you can bring out to see that you're doing everything correctly. So that's the first part. So let's check out the left hand now. All right, so once you got the right hand going, uh, once this is you know, rhythmically tight, and you know, there's a lot of different details you can go through in different patterns, but once you can do this in time, the right hand isn't that helpful in the overall articulation of your sound. That's gonna be a left hand thing. So this is a thing that I've seen a lot of students get wrong and I got it wrong as well because I always thought like whenever I had an issue with sweep picking I would always look at the right hand and be like, you know, something's going wrong here. This is actually something that I learned from Frank Gambali and watching his stuff where he talked about the left hand and the articulation. And as you saw in the clip earlier, he's amazing, but he, so you should really listen to what he has to say. So it's not only me talking about this. And what you want to make sure when you practice uh, the left hand is to cut the notes short. You don't want to do that all the time. So what I suggest is that whenever you practice something, and I'm going to show you the actual exercises that I want you to, to use for this practice challenge as well. So the first exercise is going to be a three string exercise that goes like this. And I chose this because you don't have to worry about pull-offs or hammer-ons, it's all gonna be all picked, basically. So this is the exact same thing I use for my students when they try to learn sweep picking, or when they want to learn sweep picking, because you can just focus on, you know, however many notes you have in the exercise, that's how many notes they're gonna be picked, and there's all, it's all gonna work out perfectly with the sweep technique, so you're not gonna have any, any awkward shifts here, it's just gonna be uh, like a good, good example of, of sort of ideal sweep picking uh, patterns. So the first one then is just this uh, E minor seven. So we start with this E minor triad. So we got nine on the G string, then we got eight on the B string, seven on the E string. And we do that with three, two, one. And it's just gonna be down, down, down. Then we have uh, 10 on the high E string and then eight on the B string again and seven on the G string. So we got down, 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 up, up, up. So now, uh, what I'm talking about with the, when it comes to the left hand articulation is to cut the notes short. Uh, so that's not gonna have anything to do with muting the uh, strings with the right hand. Uh, it's gonna be just open strings here, so to speak. So we're not gonna mute anything like that. Uh, instead, we're gonna cut the notes short by releasing the pressure in the left hand as soon as you play it, so... And this doesn't sound very nice when you do it, especially with distortion, 
I try to get it to sound as good as possible. And so why this works is because when you play slowly like this, these are the notes, my fingers are the notes, and then here we have the gaps in between. Uh, it sounds very disconnected. So bop, 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 bop. But when you actually speed it up, you're going to remove the gaps and the notes are going to be the equal length. So it's still going to sound very connected, but it's not going to bleed into to the next note. So that's the idea. So you control the articulation with the left hand. So a good way to practice this then is to do every other rep for this exercise challenge that I have. And also it will really help you to implement this in your overall uh, sweep picking practice is that every other rep I do one short and one normal. So like this. So if I start with short, I'll go like this. So the way that I implement this in my own practice and that I suggest that you try as well is to do alternating repetitions. So you do one short and then one normal. One short, one normal. Uh, and it's important when you do the short that you don't, you know, do anything weird with the, with the fingers or anything like that. It should just be that you release the pressure of that particular note. Otherwise, uh, other than that, it should be exactly the same motion as you do the normal playing, meaning that you hold the note longer. So the way that I want you to implement this in your own practice is to alternate. So you go one short and then one normal. Then when you actually practice, you don't want to have the gap between repetitions. It was just for demonstration purposes, so it's gonna sound like this. I'm gonna start with a short and then with a long. And so on. So, the actual practice challenge here then is to use this one and then use this one and you want to move these starting at the first available position and then you do them twice in each position and move up a half step you do all the way up the fretboard and then you go all the way back again Right, and when you go up to the top of the fretboard, it's a good idea to start on the higher shape. Then, so you basically, if I demonstrate that here, instead of starting here always, you start on the top shape instead. So you go, but implement the same, the same short, long, short, long. So short, long. So you get the idea. And so the second exercise then will look like this. It's going to be basically the same thing as... But we're going to add the D string and the A string. So it's going to be slightly different, but you're going to recognize it as well. So we start by going from 10 on the A string and then 9 on the D string. Then we have 7, 8, 7. So it's basically it's a G major uh, triad. So. And we're going to descend uh, in the exact same way we descended in the first three string one. So 10, 8, 7. And then we just add this E fifth. So 9 and 7 on the D string and the A string. So 10, 8, 7, 9, 7. And then you just uh, repeat that. So you go. And you do that in exactly the same way. You start down here, you do two, uh, one rep with short notes, one rep with long notes, move it up a half step, repeat that all the way up and all the way back. And the same thing goes here when you get reach the top, you start at the top of the pattern and move down like that. So instead of going, you're gonna actually change. But, of course, 
you don't want to do it at that, spe at that speed and also you want to make sure that you implement the actual point of this video, meaning the short note in the left hand. So it's gonna sound like this. Long. And so on, all the way up and all the way back. And here's a short thing about what sound to use when you practice this. I would do, you know, your normal distortion without the delay. Now I have some delay here, but I wouldn't use that when I practice. Uh, so just my normal distortion. Uh, and also not using an amp at all is great, especially for the, these shorter. Going between the short and the normal because the short ones sound really annoying when you use it with distortion, actually, you get that. But I find it's good to do both. Uh, using a normal clean sound is also fine, but I found that it's actually easier to get away with stuff with a good clean sound than what it is doing in it without uh, any amp at all, or actually using your normal distortion. So that's what I would experiment with if you have any questions regarding the actual sound that you practice with. All right, so the actual practice challenge then. I want you to take this three string arpeggio, start that at the first fret, do short, long uh, in each position, and you have to do it perfectly. So if you find that you make a lot of mistakes, you need to lower the tempo. Uh, and if you make a mistake, you redo that fret. So we're really striving for perfect accuracy here. And that might mean that you have to sit like. And that's fine. Uh, and another rule here is that you need to make sure that your right hand is doing the correct motion uh, for you when you practice it. So it doesn't really count if you sit like this, even though it might sound okay, because this won't work at speed. So you, you basically, ingraining a useless motion. So those are the sort of ground rules here, right? So you go all the way up, all the way back. And like, like I said before, when you get to the top, you change the direction of the exercise. It's the same notes in the same order. We are starting the top uh, note instead of the bottom note. Go all the way back. And then you do the same thing with the five, uh, the five string pattern. So exactly the same thing. Short, long, short, long, short, long all the way up, all the way back, and making sure that everything sounds perfect, okay? And you do that once a day. And I think this probably will take you maybe 10, 15 minutes to do. And if you do this, and if you actually do this for a week, I can promise you that you will feel a difference in your overall articulation when it comes to sweep picking. So really give that a try. All right, so really give it a go. Try to enter this challenge and get the practice in for seven days. It's not a big time commitment, but I think if you do it the way that I told you to do it, you're gonna see a big improvement in your articulation overall. So give that a try. And also, if you have any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, I hope you like this one and see you in the next one. <laughs>